فعاش القلب وإخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household and all his companions without exception. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and may he bless every single one of us and grant us goodness. My brothers and sisters, the aim of the lecture or the khutbah of Jumu'ah is to remind us of the duties that we have unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind us of what is right and wrong. And we would be listening to that which we do know. But perhaps for those who believe and those who are keen on improving, it would be a rejuvenation. It would be a reminder that would help them once again to plug in. We see as we go out and we are busy with whatever the world wants from us, that sometimes we begin to become distracted from that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We begin to become people who do not take into consideration the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. We sometimes become oblivious of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that when Allah bestows upon his servants something, he will ask about that. So it is very important for us to come in and listen to a reminder that would draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and further away from shaitan. A reminder that would bring us closer to the reality of death and the fact that we are all going to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are answerable for our deeds. We are answerable for the favors that Allah has bestowed upon us. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And then indeed, definitely on the day you will be asked, you will be asked about the boons or the favors of Allah upon you. When Allah gave you something, he's going to ask you about it. Indeed, he says, that when I bestow upon my worshippers something, I will ask them, what did you do with it? So bearing that in mind, I wish to repeat today a hadith that I'm sure a lot of us would know. But the reminder benefits those who believe as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remind for indeed the reminding benefits those who believe or will benefit those who believe. So if we are true believers, never feel bad when you are reminded regarding your duty unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hadith is a hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. He says one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was advising a man and we happened to hear that advice. And obviously when the messenger peace be upon him gives advice to one person, that advice is for everyone. It is advice that is applicable throughout the ages, right up to the end of time. So what was this advice? An Ibn Abbas in radiallahu anhuma, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqala li rajulin wa huwa ya'idhuh. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying to a man while advising him, اغتنم خمسا قبل خمس Seize five opportunities before they are overtaken by five conditions. Seize five of the gifts that Allah has bestowed upon you to make the most of them before they are snatched away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From this, we understand that whatever is mentioned in this hadith shall be taken away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come what may, it will be taken away either by death or by the loss of each one of them one by one. So let's listen very carefully and let's try and look at each one of them and ask ourselves how best have we seized these opportunities. The first one, the Prophet says, Shababaka qabla haramik. 
your youth, your young age, perhaps he was a man who was young, he was healthy. So the Prophet ﷺ says, you are young, you are healthy. Seize the opportunity of your health to do something with that health that you will be proud of the day you no longer have that health. And if you were to look at those who are slightly older, and if you were to talk to them and ask them whether they are our own parents or relatives, and if you were to look at them, you would be able to see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has definitely had His wisdom and His plan such that you age and your youth diminishes. You can no longer do when you are 50 what you used to do when you were 20 or 25. So therefore, every one of us who is young and able, male or female, ask yourselves, what can I do right now that I am young and I have the ability and capacity in such a way that when I grow old and I don't have that capacity anymore, I don't regret. So we would be fulfilling our salah, we would be going out and assisting others, we would be using the energy in a beautiful way, we would teach people goodness, we would teach them good manners and character, we would be going out and assisting those in need in any way we can, and we would actually perhaps the females would bear the children in that age. It's not easy to give birth when you are post 35, 40 than it would when you are much younger. So to give birth, to look after the children, to ensure that they have a positive upbringing, to participate in their lives when they most need it while we are young. So the Prophet ﷺ says, make use of your young age, your youth, before you grow out of it. And then you, we may have people who have already become older. The hadith is quite clear regarding those who may be regretting how they've used their youth. So now that I'm old, now that perhaps I cannot do what I used to do, I'm sitting and listening to this hadith and I have regret in my heart. The fact that we have that regret is already a sign of closeness to Allah. It, it means that we feel had we been given another chance, perhaps we would have used our days more wisely. So this alone, we would, we would actually be coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by pondering, by seeking Allah's forgiveness. Oh Allah, I was young. I did not make use of my days, my time as I should have and as I could have. Forgive me for that and grant me the best of the rest of my days. This is what it is. But as for those who are young, speak to the older generation, talk to them, see, get some encouragement. They will all tell you, I regret the way I used my days. I could have done better. I did so much in my life, but I am advising you, my beloved youth, that you should be doing much more than I have done for I regret. The sad reality is man doesn't want to be told. The young don't want to listen to those who are older. They feel they know better. They feel they can reinvent the wheel and do a better job, not realizing they would be wasting their time and the time of others. So it is important for us to take heed and to learn from this beginning, the opening of the hadith. Some of the scholars make mention of the fact that the opening is with the young age because perhaps that man was young and perhaps he was able. So that was one of the most important factors regarding him and I'm sure with all of us. Let me take you through to another hadith that also speaks of the virtue of those who, who are spending their youth in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says there will be seven types of people who will be granted a special shade on the day of judgment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentions the seven categories. One of them is shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. A young person, male or female, who grows up during their youth in the obedience of Allah. So my beloved youth, Remember, in these years that you have the strength and the ability, use that strength to obey Allah. Seek forgiveness for the disobedience that may have occurred. But believe me, it's never too late. We need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and we need to make amends by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the first of the five, your youth, before it is overtaken by old age before it is overtaken by inability or disability may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness secondly the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says 
Make use of the fact that you are healthy before you become sick and ill. Today I am healthy. I don't have a problem with my back, for example. I don't have, you know, something, maybe a problem with my health, my blood, something else which might be serious or not serious. While I'm healthy, I need to ask myself, am I going to spend all this time when I'm able and capable in front of the television, you know, going out fishing every weekend, subhanAllah, fishing is okay once in a while, perhaps. And that too, with the remembrance of Allah, in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do I spend my health partying, going out every weekend and forgetting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We enjoy ourselves. You know, the non-Muslims have this idea that you earn throughout the week and spend it all in the weekend. Or sometimes you earn through the month and you spend it month end. Or you earn through the year and you waste it at the end. At the end of the year, come December, you look at how much you've saved for the year and you've blown it all, literally blown away. And then come January and you are totally broke. With a Muslim, we look at it differently. We should be people who have planned who have understood the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be people who realize that life is not all about holidays. Life is not all about having the fanciest of everything. Life is not all about boasting and bragging regarding material items that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have bestowed upon you, but rather you may make use of those material items with total humility and humbleness. A true mu'min, the more he has in terms of material belongings, the closer he becomes to the rest of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thereby depicting the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So may Allah make it easy for us. That's the second part of the hadith. Then the Prophet says, seize the opportunity of your spare time before you are occupied. Faragaka qabla shughulik. You are free you have a little bit of free time spare time instead of sitting on the internet sitting on whatsapp sitting on bbm sitting on social media whole day whole night and we have to give that example because at this in this day and age that is definitely a menace it is a problem people are facing it we have family members we have real life people who are being ignored completely and who is being given preference? Those whom perhaps we don't even know. Those whom perhaps we're not even supposed to be knowing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So when you have free time, remember Allah. The adhkar. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you to repeat Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. The remembrance of Allah, the praise of Allah, glory be to Allah. Allah is the greatest. So many beautiful words of praising Allah. Myself, as well as everyone else, I am quite sure we can do much better when it comes to the remembrance of Allah. Many of us are guilty of not repeating the praise of Allah on a daily basis. We don't. We simply don't. We forget. We might even come for salah. We might even be fulfilling our salah. But ask yourself a genuine question. When last have you actually praised Allah by saying Subhanallah, 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 Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, whether it be 33 times or how many ever times possible for you? The answer to that question is we can do better. In everyone's case, myself included. Remember Allah because you have the spare time. Go and learn the Quran. Learn that which will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, a person who is so dedicated in business, any moment he gets, he will be surfing the internet looking for bargains. Or he will go out to earn something. He won't want to sit for a moment free. He wants to earn money. With us, there are limits to everything. While we must, yes, earn whatever we can in terms of worldly the worldly life the material items while we are alive and we are able and capable it is our duty to do so but not at the expense of your hereafter you need to strike a balance this is why we have salah five times a day we have so many reminders from allah to prepare for the day you will be meeting with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by developing the link with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my brothers and sisters as much as we want to earn things we also need to earn for paradise we need to earn for the hereafter imagine when you and i meet with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is so pleased because he, he shows us that every moment you got spare you actually remembered me you went 
into my word, you read it, you learnt it, you tried to understand it, you put it into practice, you conveyed it to others, you improved on your prayer, you improved on your understanding, and you did so much today, I want to give you Jannah or paradise without reckoning. Subhanallah. May Allah do that to us. So it's important for us to use our time wisely. A day will come when you don't have the time. Many people when they graduate, say from O level or A level, or they are waiting for results or just post university looking for a job, they have some spare time. They use that spare time to sleep, sleeping alone. I spoke to one young man and I told him, brother, why is it that you sleep so much? He says, because I heard the Sheikh saying that sleeping is an act of worship. Astaghfirullah. So people are misinterpreting the deen in order to facilitate for their weakness. Let's not do that. Yes, sleeping is an act of worship, but oversleeping can become detrimental to the health, both physical and spiritual of the same individual. So remember this, get up, work hard, go and do something. Think up things. Sometimes you may not like to do something that is beneficial for you. Go and get it done because who knows, you might be developing in that particular field in a way that you had never imagined. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow upon us His blessings and to grant us a deep understanding regarding the time and how important it is to utilize it in the best way. Because if you don't, it is wasted. Before you know it, your health is lost, your youth is lost, and your time is lost. Then, the fourth part of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَغِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فقرك. Seize the opportunity of your wealth before it is overtaken by poverty. And from this, we learn very clearly that wealth will not remain in your hands or my hands forever. It has to go. It has to go. If Allah has made you a wealthy person, remember a day will come when you will definitely suffer a loss. It's impossible that anyone can be only on a good wicket for the rest of their lives. That is absolutely impossible. I have with these ears heard people say, I have enough wealth to last me three generations. And about four years down the line, they told me I've lost all my money. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and understanding. This is all the plan of Allah to show you. What he has given you is a trust entrusted to you by him. Use it wisely. No matter what you have, one might say, well, I am poor. I'm not wealthy. The truth is it's not got to do with amounts. It's got to do with what you have. Don't you have something? Well, give from it, reach out to others from it. You have a little bit. You can give a little bit. If I, for example, only have a hundred dollars, I can give out one dollar, five dollars. That five percent is much more than a person who has 100 million and only gives out one million. For example, the percentage is far greater with the one who gave out a smaller amount than the one who gave out a larger amount, but had even more. So remember this. People say, what is my duty unto the, those who are suffering across the globe after I have given my zakah? The reality is zakah is something that already belonged to Allah. No merit of yours. There is no big deal when you give to Allah the zakah that already belonged to him. The big deal is when you give to him that which is over and above zakah, which you yourself want to give. This is the big deal. When Allah tells you, I'm going to give you $99 or let's make it more realistic. I'm going to give you $97.5. But there's a hundred dollar bill here. You need to give me the two dollars fifty change and you give him the change. Was that a big deal on your part? Nothing. You did nothing. You only gave back the change because it was not yours in the first place. Two and a half percent of it went because Allah says that's mine. Give it to me. But when you say, you know what? I want to give back 10 whole dollars. Subhanallah. There are churches who give away 10% of their salary. When Muslimin are only asked for 2.5% of their savings, but they find it difficult to even work that out and give it. The excuse shaitan makes them use is, my money is tied up. Well, loosen it up. You know, your money will be tied up until you will be tied up in your grave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So that is the fourth part of this beautiful hadith. The last part of the hadith speaks about the reality that we started with. وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ Seize the opportunity of your life before you pass away, before your death overtakes you. So if we have, for example, lost our wealth, We've lost our health. We've lost our young age. 
we've lost so much in terms of our time, for example. And now we are sitting. Allah says, no problem. Don't worry. You still have a chance. What is your chance? Seize the opportunity of you being alive before you actually die. So now you will have more time to remember Allah. You will have more time to reflect over the greatness and mercy of Allah. Those who are older from amongst us, I give you a piece of advice from the advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is concentrate on the mercy of Allah. Concentrate on the qualities of mercy and hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as a blessing. Because if we concentrate on the punishment of Allah and the wrath of Allah at an, at an age whereby we are now considered old, it makes us despondent. Shaitan may come to us and make us feel like we've achieved nothing in life. But as you are older, have hope in the mercy of Allah until your final breath. You must have hope. You must smile. You must have conviction within you that Allah loves you. And Allah will look at your good deeds and grant you Jannah through them and look at your bad deeds and wipe them out because you asked for forgiveness. So my brothers and sisters, we ask Allah to forgive us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who can use all these five opportunities in a way that we don't regret. Remember, my brothers and sisters, what you have will not remain with you forever. What you are given has to go away no matter what. Even your own family members, either you lose them or they will lose you. But a day will come when you will have nothing. It will be you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be answering for how you have been using all that Allah has given you. May Allah make it easy for us upon that day. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad.